kids, Miss Kulkani here. In this video, we will talk about different states of matter and also some terms which will be used throughout chemistry. But before that, here's a chart and we will discuss the properties of main states of matter. So which are those main states? Solids, liquids and gas. Let's talk about the first thing. How close those are? They are extremely close in solid. And then in liquids, they are close but not as close as solids. And in gas, they are quite loosely arranged and they are far away from each other. How about IMF? There are inner molecular forces. Those forces are extremely strong in solids. They are weaker in liquids and they are no IMFs at all in gas. How about shape? Solids will always have definite shape and volume. Whereas both liquid and gases will take the shape of the container. Then about fluidity, we know liquids are fluid. They can move. Gases are extremely frequently moving all over places. And whereas in solids, it is very restricted. We will not have fluidity in solids. Density. Density is highest in solids and it's medium. And as we go towards gas, it becomes low density. Compressibility. Can we compress those using pressure? In case of solids, we cannot compress those much. Liquids, somewhat we can compress. And gases, we know we use compressed air in tires, so we can definitely easily compress gases. How about expansion? It's exactly the same thing. Solids can expand, but not much beyond a limit. Whereas we have liquids, they expand slightly. And whereas gases will expand much more. So going back to tires, we can easily have tires blown up if there is extra air, which can expand because of heat. And then there's diffusion, it is mixing of molecules. Diffusion will be extremely slow in solids. It will diffuse easily in case of liquid, but keep in mind, they need to be miscible for that. And in case of gases, they will diffuse very, very easily. All right. With that, we come to the phase changes. Because all these solid, liquid and gas, those are phases and all these phases are interchangeable. And how does that take place? Because of some molecular forces and those could be intramolecular and also intermolecular forces. So what are intramolecular bonding? Those are the bonds which are inside or intra in the molecule. And these are very strong interactions. What about the intermolecular forces? They are between one molecule to another molecule. And there could be also pulls between positive and negative ends of molecules with the polarity. And these interactions are strong, but not as strong as intramolecular bonding. So what happens when substances are changing their states among solid, liquid and gases? They are either strengthening or weakening their forces. And which forces we are talking about? Those are the inner molecular forces. All right, so let's talk about different phase changes and how do we name those? Here is liquids changing to vapor and you know very well that will be called as vaporization. Then next one we have is vapor changing to liquid. It's opposite to what we talk and that must be condensation. Okay, then we go to solid changing to liquid, like ice changing to water. What is it? It is melting. And now liquid changing to solid. We are putting water and freezing it. So actually you got the answer. That's called freezing. Then sometimes solid can change directly into vapor. There is no liquid. So we go directly from solid to gas. That will be called as sublimation and the last one is directly going from gas to solid without going through liquid 
and that is called as deposition. Okay? So you know about all these changes which take place among different phases. So what's the difference between evaporation and boiling? Evaporation is changing from liquid to gas. And so is the boiling, changing from liquid to gas. So what's the difference? It is the temperature. Evaporation takes place below the boiling point. Whereas boiling takes place exactly at the boiling point. Also, there is one more major difference. In evaporation, not all molecules will be having enough IMF. So, the surface molecules will have enough energy to overcome the IMF and then they will evaporate. Whereas in case of boiling, it is all the molecules will be having enough energy to overcome the IMF and they will change into gas. So finally, it is exothermic versus endothermic. Okay, what are those? There is a word thermic which stands for heat and exo and endo also have some meaning tied up with. So a process could be exothermic or endothermic depending upon what's happening to heat. If heat exits the system, that is exothermic. Okay, heat is released. If the process takes heat in, heat is entering the system, then that is called as an endothermic process. And here are some examples of exothermic processes, condensation, freezing and deposition. And for endothermic, we get vaporization, melting and sublimation. Here is an easy trick to remember. We have solids, liquids and gas. If you go from solid to liquid to gas, it will always take heat in. That means those will be endothermic processes. So solid to liquid is melting. That's we got melting here. Liquid to gas is vaporization and we got that over here. And if it's solid to gas, it is still sublimation. So when we go from solid to gas, then it will be always endothermic. And if you go reverse way from gas to liquid, gas to solid or liquid to solid, that will be exothermic. For example, there is condensation, which will be liquid to solid. There is deposition, which is gas to solid. And there is freezing, which is liquid to solid. So that's an easy trick to classify the phase changes as exothermic or endothermic. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you in our next video. Until then, bye-bye.